welcome back to my channel. I am Erica. If you are new, feel free to subscribe. I decided that I just wanted to kind of start my sewing classes. So this will be a beginner's tutorial on how to make a bow tie. Super simple, super easy. If you guys have a son, nephew, boo, or if you want to rock it for yourself because I love rocking bow ties. Here is a simple way to create your own bow tie. And the way that I'm gonna teach you guys, it's not gonna be pattern based. I know for me when I started working out and even to this day, um, designing different garments, working with a pattern was extremely confusing. So when I started teaching you guys through my different classes, I'm gonna show you different hacks and trip tips that won't confuse you when it comes to learning how to read a pattern and going by the pattern. Sometimes you have to get creative and break down the pattern according to what makes sense to you and then work out the kinks along the way with the fit and the sizing. So sometimes you just want to start sewing and I totally understand that. I was one who just kind of dove in and started sewing myself. So let's get into it. Today we're going to be working with Ankara faux leather and interface. So the fabrics that I selected for today, here is the Ankara faux leather and interface. Now if you don't know about interface, it's an amazing fabric that you, it's really, really stiff. Well, they have different um, variations of interface, but what you use it as, it's for the structure for your garment. So because we are making a bow tie, the fabric that I'm using it's lightweight and I want to make sure that my bow tie has structure to it so that it actually, you know, it sits well on its own. It's not floppy. It's not hanging. This is totally your call. If you don't want to use interface, you don't have to, but you can definitely purchase it at your local craft stores, even at Walmart. Like I said, they have different variations. There's light interface, medium, and heavy duty. So it just depends on the project that you're going to make and how stiff and firm you want your the outcome of your garment to be. So for today, I'll be using this. I cut a four by four for the interface. I'm gonna show you all of that, but before we get into it, let's go ahead and get to our sewing machines, make sure that we have everything ready for the sewing machine so that we can get started on our project. So I have a Husk Varna Viking. Um, there are many different sewing machines that you can work with, especially if you're starting out. This was not my first sewing machine. <laughs> I actually did a how to use your sewing machine tutorial in another video. So if you haven't watched that, be sure to go back and watch that just to get accustomed to your sewing machine. This is your first time ever working with a sewing machine. Don't be intimidated. Your sewing machine is about to be bay. Your boo, hopefully you'll fall in love with sewing so much that if you do have an actual bay or boo, you may not have that much time for them because you're gonna be on your sewing machine. Maybe you can make something for Bay or Boo or you know, whatever. But don't be intimidated. Like you will learn your sewing machine along the way. You'll learn which fabrics, which needles, which thread types to use. And hopefully I can be of assistance in helping you with that as well. Because we are using actually two different types of fabrics. So when it comes to Ankara, I love it because it's a beautiful fabric. Um, the, the prints are amazing. However, it is stiff. So with that, I wanna make sure that the thread that I'm using is going to be accommodating to the fabric. So the thread that I, well, excuse me, the thread and the needle. The thread and needle that I use for the Ankara will be different from the needle that I use for the faux leather. So for the full le leather, it's a stretch. It's a lightweight stretch. I'm going to use, there we go. So it starts at your 8011, 9014, and 100. For the 8011, those are for your lightweights. The 90 is medium, and the 100 is for your heavy duty, you know? So for the stretch faux leather, I'm gonna go with the 80. And then for the Ankara, I'll go with the 90 because it's not that, um, if it were actually like real leather leather or sometimes when I have, um, you know, gowns that are structured with um, heavy duty quality, I'll go for the 100. But for today, I'm just gonna use the 80 and the 90. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you have the right needle 
sewing machine is on and we need to select our thread. I'm going to go with, I have two different types, navy and royal. This is giving me more royal essence. So I'm gonna go with the royal blue. And then when I switch out for my black faux leather, I'm gonna switch it with the black, okay? We're gonna thread the sewing machine. <clears throat> All sewing machines um, are not the same. You will learn your sewing machine, like I said, over time. Um, if you're working with a brother, singer, it just kind of depends. I prefer brother. I have a, I've had um, two brothers, a Kenmore, a singer, and now I'm working with a Husk Barna. I prefer brother. Um, if you have a singer and you love it, great. It really just depends on what works for you. So, but like I, in saying that, you'll have to learn how to thread your machine according to your machine. For me, mine will go on the top. I'll loop it here. Majority of them kind of have the same routine where my thread will come down. I'm going to raise the lever. It'll come back up and then swoop it back down. <clears throat> Put your thread behind the hook. And I need to, actually that's the correct needle that I have in. I'm going to keep my needle there. Different sewing machines will allow you to, they'll have an automatic loop for your needle. Mine, you know, it was fun. Came with an automatic loop, so I, but trust me, back in the day I definitely had to use my, uh, the good eye, my good vision to, um, thread the needle, but you know, this one came with an automatic threader, so I didn't have to worry about that. Okay, and I'm going to lower the speed. I'm also going to increase the length. I have mine at 3.5. It will vary depending upon, like I said, the fabric. Um, when it comes to the length of your stitches, your tighter, the lower the number, the tighter the stitch will be. Um, the higher the number, the longer the length of your stitch will be, you know, your smaller stitches, the longer the length. Usually if you're doing like a basting stitch where let's say you're going to make a dress, but you don't want it to be the exact stitching for the dress because you kind of want to make sure that the dress fits well first, just in case you have to take it out. The seam ripper is my friend. So, um, you would use the higher number for a basting stitch because it'll be easier to use your seam ripper to unravel the stitch. So today I'm going to go with the 3.5 and I'm going to take my two pieces of fabric, the Ankara and the faux leather, stitch them together because half of my bow tie will be Ankara, the other half will be the faux leather. Okay, cut my pieces. Now these are still too big because remember we're going to make one side in Ankara, the other side in the leather. So I'm still going to be cutting them, but I just wanted you to see. You want to just cut it four by four because then we're going to fold it. Pinch it, pinch it to make our bow tie. So let's just sew the two halves together. My two halves are together. We'll pin them down and then start sewing. Your length should be on your sewing machine between three and four, but like I said, you'll get to know her like you know yourself and figure it out along the way. So when you start, there's a grid that's on your sewing machine plate. You want to use that so that you stay your stitch stays in a straight line and also it's clearance for your seam allowance. Your seam allowance is going to be the space between your stitches and the end of the fabric. So that space right there is called seam allowance. All right, so you wanna place it on your grid and give yourself about a quarter of an inch for your seam allowance, it can be a little less than that as well. All right, I'm gonna put my footer down and then depending on your sewing machine, you will place your needle into the thread. Make sure that you always have your footer down and then the needle into the thread before you start sewing. If you're working with a pedal, now is when you wanna put your foot on the pedal. This is not, it actually, it came with a pedal but I don't use it. There's a start and stop button. So I'm gonna press start. All right, stop, 
because I want to reverse. Make sure that when you start and stop your stitch, you always do a reverse because that way it'll lock in the thread. So you want to start a little bit, count to three, one, two, three, and then let it reverse so that that stitch will lock in and it won't unravel along the way. Because if your stitch is not locked in, it's going to unravel and you'll be naked. You don't want that. Okay, so I'm going to reverse. Stop it again and then move forward. All right, move your pins out of the way. Pin out of the way. I'm slowly coming to the end. I'll stop, put it in reverse, and start it again. Take it off reverse and stop it. My needle is up. I want to raise the footer up and pull the, the thread and the fabric away from the sewing machine. You may have a cutter on your sewing machine. Mine is right here. That will allow me to just cut the additional thread off. All right, so we have two halves together. It's coming along, it's coming along. What we need is just one we need them both to be the same size as this. So as you can see, each one is, but it's too much fabric because we don't need that much fabric. So what I'm going to do, you'll notice as we start trying new projects, using the center of your fabric, which is called, sometimes if you've ever heard, on the fold, it's basically the center. So think of your fabric like, you know, like your spine. Like you want to be make, make sure that everything is centered because what you do to one side, you'll do to the other side. So, and that will be helpful when it comes to making sure that there's an even balance for, let's say if you're making a sleeve, your left sleeve, your right sleeve. So because our bow tie will be in the center, that's where the fabrics will separate, the Ankara versus the leather. And when it comes to cutting, I use a grid board. Some of you may use a table, the floor. Trust me, I have the floor. I'll use the floor as well if you don't have like a crafter's table. Um, but even if you just use a measuring tape or a good ruler, just to make sure that it's precise, make sure that you add that to your sewing machine kit. I'm going to cut this directly with the interface so everything will be the same dimension. Now, I actually need another cut of this because you need a front and a back. All right, you only need one of your interface because that's going inside the front and the back of your fabrics. So I'm gonna go cut another piece. The key to a good garment is it's a clean stitch, making sure that the threading is clean, as well as ironing, and we'll get into that. Ironing will make or break your garment. You don't wanna be lazy when it comes to you know your garment because every piece matters so I'm a stickler for ironing um, you may not feel like it but get up and do it anyway because <laughs> I promise you the outcome of your garment will be so much better when it's clean fronts face fronts okay your front fronts face each other we're going to stitch it one two Three, and then we're going to leave one side open so that we can gather it from the inside out, okay? Because we're using interface, the interface needs to go on the outside, not in between, because when we do it from the, fold it from the inside out, the interface will end up being in between your fabric. So make sure your interface is on the outside. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna 
start at my seam allowance, foot her down, needle down, foot her down. Okay, you should be at the edge of your fabric. In order to swing your fabric around, lift only the footer. Keep the needle in the fabric. Lift the footer and swing the fabric around to get to the other side. Footer down and keep sewing. You don't have to do the reverse stitch because you're going to continue the seam. Okay, I'm almost at my other corner, so I'm going to lift the footer, swing the fabric, lower the footer, and continue stitching. I'm almost near the end. I'm going to reverse it and bring it back forward. Stop. I've raised the needle. I've raised the footer. I'm going to take the fabric away from me and then cut the excess thread. What we want to do now is to iron before we close in the other side. Okay, so I went to iron. Now it looks flat, there's no bulk. And keep in mind when you do iron, because we're working with faux leather, do not iron directly on the faux leather. Even if you wanna place a pillowcase or a towel on top of it, what I actually did was I only ironed this side. And because of the heat, it pressed through onto the opposite side <clears throat> and it was able to, you know, clean and <clears throat> clean the opposite side, but definitely do not iron the faux leather, okay? At this point, I'm going to change the needle because the fabric is starting to get stiffer. I want to make sure that the stitch and the seam and everything goes through properly, so I'm going to switch out my needle. take form it's totally your call however you want it to it's your call your bow tie can either go vertically and what you want to do is pinch down pinch and then pinch again cute right so what we'll need is the actual strap to close in the pucker we need it to close in so if you have extra fabric scraps left, you can do the faux leather or you can do the Ankara. I'm going to do the Ankara just because it pops more on camera and I want to make sure that you guys can see it. This is about, let's see, it's five inches for your the little scrap piece the strap that'll go. So we'll set this to the side. Fold it. And stitch. And if you want, you can do a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch is totally your call, whatever your flavor is. I'm going to fix it, but it's coming along. Next step is to stitch in the back where your strap is to close in the stitch so that it will actually hold the bow tie in place and it won't unravel. So get it as close to the fabric of the bow tie as you can, but don't stitch <laughs> the bow tie, okay? And be careful with your fingers. Like I said, 
use the bow tie as a guide how close the stitch will be for the strap. Keep going back and forth. The last thing, well, second to last that we need is the actual piece that will go around our neck. Okay, I already had this pre-cut. If you don't know your, your neck measurement, just take the measuring tape all the way around. Mine is reading at 14. I'll probably make mine strap it's 15 because once we actually sew the edges it'll take some of the excess off and you just want to make sure that it's not so tight you know you don't want to choke okay remember when i said make it a little bit longer you're going to fold the edges down pin it and then the other side, fold the edge down. The key to sewing, like I said, is always to keep things clean as much as you can. Even if you're be as a creative, you want it to be <laughs> structured chaos is what I like to term things, you know. You can be an artist, but just make sure that it's intentional in the outcome of your pieces. Um, I definitely love to color outside of the lines, but you want to make sure that your actual piece can be well received and appreciated. So make sure that you um, just do a little bit of a hem for the edges. So now we're at the tail end of your DIY bow tie. And now we need to just talk about the enclosure. You have the option of using an elastic band if you wanna add elastic to it, so that way you can stretch it out or if you want to add snaps, which is what I usually do, especially if you have an exact measurement, just add snaps to it. Or if you wanna do Velcro, you have that option as well. These are what the snaps look like. So you would basically just hand stitch one snap onto one side of the bow tie, and then the other snap on the opposing side of the bow tie hand stitch it on and then it's an it's an easy finish i prefer to go that route but it's totally your call whatever works for you i hope that this has helped and i can't wait to see if you guys decide to like it's super cute super cute if you guys decide to take pictures be sure to post it i'd love to see how it came out for you Stay on the lookout. There'll definitely be more DIY tutorials to come. How to learning how to sew with the Glitter Academy. You know, fun, easy hacks and tips and tricks for beginners who don't always want to do go the traditional route with the use of patterns. Because I understand that sometimes they can be a little bit confusing. And sometimes you just want to get into it and start sewing and go for it. So here is where you can find out how to do so without it being so intimidating. Get to know your sewing machine. There'll be more to come. Be sure to subscribe and have an amazing day and rock your bow tie. Bye, guys.